Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center with a new video on some 2021 knife unveils, this time from Condor and my good friend, Mr. Joe Flowers. How are you, sir? Good, welcome to SHOT Show 20, uh, <laughs> what is it, 2021 now? Something like that. More. This is that old Mish metal, by the way. <laughs> I'm just, the fact that I can just set fires during a, a quote unquote SHOT Show time interview is just fun. So I just might be doing that half the time randomly with all these knife blades because I haven't really tested them yet on that. <laughs> What's well, up? That's very on brand for you anyway. I'm good, man. How are you? Good. You know, just like everybody else, the whole knife industry is trying to play catch up on 2020. So um, COVID free so far. Good to hear. Are we allowed to say that? Probably. I don't know. We'll check with, uh, we'll check with legal. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, Joe, thanks for joining us. Uh, folks out there, I think we're in for a treat today. Joe, of course, is uh, just one of the designers for Condor, very prolific mm -hmm. designer for Condor. And we're here today to uh, take a look at a few of his new designs for the year. And uh, I haven't even seen these yet. This is going to be a surprise to me as we go. Uh, so I'm going to let you take it away, my friend. What do we got to look at first? Okay, well, just real quick, this is... Um... Uh, a special type of mish metal that's harder to ignite but lasts longer. And uh, I just found it again. So I'll be playing with it throughout the interview because <laughs> we can. So you can, like, it can throw, I'm trying to throw it at the uh, screen there. There we go. Oh, that was a good shot. Um, but what I'm doing that with <laughs> is a particularly new knife design, kind of the SEAC style. This one is called the Seagrun. Um, I named it after a uh, um, Valkyrie in uh, mythology. It has a smashing pommel and a, uh, a really, really ergonomic uh, blade shape that you see maybe on the Swamp Romper. Mm -hmm. And it comes with a Kydex sheath that has a, a special new little clamp over system. So it's ambidextrous. You know, uh, wh what do you think of when you start seeing Viking knives all of a sudden? I don't know where we're going with this. What? <laughs> uh, where where do you, what, what's really trending right now, or at least used to be, that everybody seems to be watching now? How's that show Vikings for a little while? Is that show Vikings? Vikings and Game of Thrones and all that. So I started looking into some of the designs, and you know, I've never had a, a CX style or, or any type of um, Viking style bushcraft knife that I, that I could use out in the bush. So when I designed this, I tried to think of a point that wasn't, that was still pretty usable. And good night, that straight cutting surface is just fantastic for um, whittling. So I was pretty pretty um, excited about that. You can even use it as a draw knife for bow save making. Um, I didn't think that point like that would be so usable. So it definitely turned me on to this point. Well, especially with that, that mostly straight edge, you're going to be able to hog off some really big chunks of wood as you're, as you're going through that since you don't have that belly to contend with with your blade potentially slipping out at the end of the cut. You could get a lot of power right. out of that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think maybe that's why they translude, uh, you know, that was such a good sword, you know, back in the day. But then again, you get the curvature versus the straightness and all that stuff too. The The inside is skeletonized. It is one fourth of an inch thick. Um, and I believe a six inch blade, um, 1075 carbon steel. And, um, uh, well, that's that. That's called the Sigrun. Well, and I saw you striking that uh, that Mish metal there at the beginning, and it looked like you were doing it in the uh, the choil there. Is that uh, so? Right. That's crisp enough to to strike a fire steel. Yeah, yeah, and th that wasn't even rehearsed or anything. I just kind of made it around that size. I don't use choils much, but we'll get back to that. Um, <laughs> but I'm trying to, as a designer, I guess, and this could be a rant, but trying not to fall into things where I'm like, well, I don't use those. Why shouldn't I design them in my Knife. So I'm starting to put a lot of different other thought aspects in the knife blades, but it has a smaller choil there. Let's pick up a normal, um, normal fire steel. Should get better results there. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is your normal style um, hour metal um, A U E R fire steel. That's the mish metal stuff I'm playing with. Anyway, yeah, it has that there. It's just one more controllable spot. Of course, you can do it on the back too. Um, of any knife, as long as you take off the coating or something along that line. Yeah, that's a cool now, looking piece. I dig it. Consequently enough, that same handle is going on the Griffiths Bowie. That's new this year. This is a prototype in the raw. And it's kind of cool here because you can kind of see the process of designing. I thought it would be cool to make a uh, Condor logo 
as the back part of a knife oh, um, yeah. blade. But that. um, yeah, it's the least ergonomic thing in the world. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, you might see it again on a long handled item where your your fingers aren't coming on there. But um, uh, we scrapped that idea, and I took the same handle that's on this prototype and put it on the Griffiths. Um, and it's thicker too. This one's only three millimeters thick. The um, Griffiths is going to be a fourth of an inch thick. Tidex sheath, 1075 high carbon steel. Yeah, that's definitely got some really cool lines going on there. Yeah, it's, you know, I tried to make it after the Spanish style bowies mm -hmm. that you see in kind of the modern era. Um, you know, there, there's a bunch of other variations of that type of knife design. And, um, uh, we just did not have a Bowie around this size. And these small Bowies, um, I think, are really cool because they're big enough to, to get a little bit of respect. But um, they're also, you know, a little bit agile enough to be actually useful. So um, I, I like them, kind of in that combat knife tactical range. So is that what you kind of see the uh, the potential applications for that knife is, is less of a bush knife, definitely more of a tactical design? Correct, correct. And, you know... That was for the um, for the Seagram. That was the idea with the Seagram. But I'm like, I'm going to start carrying this <laughs> now because it's actually a fantastic bush knife. You know, kind of like um, that's probably how like a lot of the SC knives, you know, started. They're a great bush knife, but they're also pretty tactical looking. Yeah, um, it's good to have both. Yeah, absolutely. In my mind. Let's keep going about tactical. Let's do it. Um, can you see this? I might have to get closer. Yep. Is that a little double edged? Uh mini yep. neck gladius, gladius or something like knife. that exactly it's nice. a gladius neck knife <laughs> um made out of uh, 1075 high carbon steel um double edged uh it's actually pretty useful uh, even though it has more of that tactical feel the edge is very thick you can take out of you know staples out of these really thick cardboard boxes sometimes the shipping containers come in if you want it to be super covert you can take off the um paracord wrap on the handle and the uh uh, and you can, you know, use some much thinner cord on the sheath, which is Kydex, and uh, wear it as a neck knife or, or a boot knife. Um, it's just a really usable design. It's another straight edge, you know, point down the center line design where it's really, really tactile as far as feel and function. You might, if you want it for an EDC, have a very, very fine edge and then the edge that uh, you use on uh, speaker wire or something <laughs> like that, too. Now, is that Kydex sheath there, um, is that going to work with some any kind of aftermarket attachments if they wanted to, say, carry it on the belt or, like, with some kind of pocket clip or anything like that? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's um, the, the, you can use any sort of the um, tech lock style, you know, attachments or the billions that are out there now um, for these. These are around the size of, uh, I believe, a fourth of an inch thick uh, rivets, so they'll fit the smaller um, hardware, not the big, thicker ones, like, for the big tech locks and things along that line right on. um and uh it is um small enough to you know mount onto a pack strap or something along that line too so can yeah, have very that, cool you know, like, ready yeah to open up some boxes <laughs> while you're backpacking and stuff solid snake joe flowers running through the woods yeah <laughs> now now we're getting <laughs> into the fun stuff but once again you know like everybody's do it doing um during these fun times, a lot of different production and things have gotten messed up and, you know, it's here and there. So you guys are seeing pretty raw prototypes. Um, there are some changes with some of the items. This guy is called the shotgun machete. Um, it's a large chopper. In the production version, there's going to be a lanyard and there's going to be shotgun checkering on the sides. And it has a fuller, if you can see that down the um, Just blade. barely, this is yeah. Just meant to be a big, beefy, spoony chopper. Um, it is three millimeters thick, um, and I've tested each one of these. You'll see these are all banged up. These aren't pretty because um, we've tested every single one of these uh, for um, uh, durability issues, etc. cetera. Um, this is going to have a 12-inch blade, 1075 high carbon steel, um, and a full grain leather sheet. Solid. So when it's you say... Very, uh... very weight forward. So when you say shotgun texturing on the handle, do you mean like the like from a, a shotgun gun stock, that sort of thing, like Correct. that yeah, diamond texture? Yeah, we're going to be having that laser etched on it. Um, it's not very uh, uh, high up. It's going to be laser etched, so it's just enough grip so that you have it. When I said, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to break some of my own rules for designing, for this one, I added very, very, very small radius for, um, a, uh, uh, for finger grooves, mm -hmm. too. Um, and I'm talking minimal, like the most, and 
look at that. There's a toil in there. So you can use it for, you know, toil related stuff. I had to, you know, think, oh, I never use toils anymore. Um, I need to take a step back and go, I need to start putting those back into some of the uh, designs that I do just because got to break some, got to break some eggs. That's how you keep, uh, keep staying original, keep pushing it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I never, I don't think I can remember any um, designs, at least that I've done, um, that I've had a, a finger grooves on for a while. And it even took forever for some of my other knife guys to finally like it. But, um, <laughs> well, I like the look it, of the, I like the look of the shape there at the end. Um, a, a lot of times when it gets too hooky, you can actually get a hot spot on your pinky when you're swinging. But that yeah. looks, that looks just about right to me, at least here through the camera. You know, that, that, um, that, that eagle's beak at the end of the pommel there that you're, you're speaking of, you'll see a large projection on the end of machetes, um, uh, such as the Ontario machetes and stuff. And people don't really know why. And it's to uh, have that same, you know, grip to where it works real well behind without yanking out of your uh, hand. Now, this is probably my favorite design of um, 2021. This is the Kojang. Um, I really like the story behind it. Because I found out, you know, just by being a huge machete nut, um, that there's this whole subset of um, uh, collectors who collect Indo-Pacific um, and Indo-Archipelago uh, 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 weapons and, 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 and um, tools and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I inquired to one of them, um, Albert von Zonnefeld, uh, about some of his books. And they're out of print, but um, I was able to find one, finally. And I contacted him and talked to him about this particular design I saw in there. And that's called the Kojang. Um, and it's named after a kampong, a village that's off of um, uh, where it came from. And it has this knunting style front edge uh, 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 um, sway to it. And it's, you know, in a different direction than almost like every other machete I've designed. And so I looked it up and, and tried to find all this information on it and found a gentleman who had one in, Sa in San Francisco. Um, and so I purchased it off of him. And what I got was this amazingly well-balanced horn handled, um, sword, uh, uh, that, um, I really loved the, the lines on and just felt really good in the hand. And, um, so I took this, this sword it was made maybe around the turn of the 1800s, um, early 1900s and, um, uh, took it down for the engineers to look at and they liked it too. So we ended up modeling this after it. Um, now, unlike the um, horn handle version, we have a full tang and it's skeletonized to make it more uh, weight forward. You'll see there's an odd swedge at the end. That's to keep the tradition of the Kojang that kind of looks like the foot of a lamb okay. um, on a lot of the swords while still keeping it practical. So there's that little um, lanyard hole that'll be there too. Um, this particular one has a rounded handle. It'll be a little bit more egg shaped for indexing, but a huge distal taper going from one fourth to uh, like an eighth of an inch thick. Oh, wow. Um, a really, really fantastic and fast design. This thing is is sweet. Yeah, it looks, you know, I like that kind of lamb's, uh, you know, you said sheep's foot. <laughs> sheep's foot, it's funny to use that, not talking yeah. about a blade. But there on the end, that, that gives you a little bit of that swell for retention. Um, I bet it's a powerful swinger. In a way, it kind of reminds me of just like a big old cane machete almost. Yeah. And, you know, this this point, you know, going front towards makes it really good for chopping. I, of course, you know, knock the edge um, a little bit on some rocks uh, going crazy with this on pine trees. Um, but it, it, it works really, really well for limb clearing and chopping. And it's also pretty lightweight. I'm really excited about this one. I don't know if everybody else is uh, as excited, but this is my favorite one um, so far. Uh, you guys can't see the woods behind me, right? Too well? Yeah, we can see. All right, because I can walk out there and try and chop something real quick if you want. Well, you're going to get awfully small on the screen if you do that. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll just. <laughs> yeah. I know it's it's hard to contain Joe. I I, I will admit, but we're going to try, folks. <laughs> yeah. The the other interesting thing about the original design was that, um, like a lot of the traditional um, ways people grind their factory machetes in, in South America and in Central America. Uh, where they just put an edge only like uh, three fourths of the way down. Mm -hmm. um, the the Kojang sword that we had was flat up here and back here, so that you could use it for more finer stuff. Now um, we didn't include that because you know people would be like, "Why didn't you sharpen the back end?" And all you need to do is take a file and you know yeah. ma make it go to be more ergonomic that way. But, yeah, um, I think that's I definitely that definitely an American uh, preference there for the the American market, especially. 
as opposed to yeah. the folks who are uh, who are actually using it. Well, I guess that tells you a little bit of something. <laughs> right, right. It, but you know, honestly, if we did that, it would look kind of silly um, too. So you know, you want this to, to look like a sword um or to look like a cutting tool more than anything else and you can the way we're going to be having the handle made you're going to be able to choke uh up on the front here too and still of course use it for long long strokes as well um david i'm really really proud of this design i think it's going to be really cool i i think you're convincing me i'm i'm liking the lines of it i'm liking the fact that you guys got a distal taper going on there uh huge yeah distal taper. it's it's good to see you guys continuing to uh to improve on some of those uh, some of those elements like that that require a bit yeah. more finesse. Yeah, and we've and you know the um, well honestly this one has been my go to all all year long so far um, as one like oh man I really want to test this out and we've done some changes on the sheath like took taking away that that um, uh, button because it wasn't needed but um, the the distal taper just makes it so balanced and and it's still just a lightweight little design comparatively to some of the other longer machetes that we have out there. Yeah, I mean, I guess the question for me is going to be, once I get my hands on it, is it going to replace my Condor Makara that is my go-to uh, go to yard maintenance tool these days? I don't know, man. When you pick up the, the Makara and you've got a two-handed grip, you're just like, and you helped make that very, very popular. Oh, but, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I have, I have two basher ma Makaras. Um, just like, I don't care what happens to them, throw them. Let's do all that. And, um, uh, uh, you know, even that we're going to be updating the, the rivets and make them more solid on it um, coming up just because I think it's going to make that thing look a, a little bit more or it's going to be a little bit more strong. Um, and uh, it's been a fantastic blade. I, I, I love it. Like it. I love going out in my front yard and just uh, trimming up the, the hedges in the front of the yard. And it's, it's good to let your neighbors know you might be a little bit crazy sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my neighbors hear enough explosions out here to, to uh, uh, do that. So the last one that I have to show you, and these aren't all of um, uh, uh, 2021's designs. We've got 36 new designs out, um, including one uh, called the Batonata. Um, baton, nada. Um, it's basically made for batoning. Um, uh, based off of Japanese style uh, um, shake making, uh, shingle making um, uh, froze that they use. Mm -hmm. Um, but also new this year, and you can check out all the new stuff in the catalog, um, is the Polar North. And this is um, just a, a straight up new design uh, from me that I tried to encompass a lot of the things people seem to like in the bushcraft knives and, and put it into a smaller, thin machete. Um, there's a point down the center line, so you're easily able to have control if you're carving you know, with, uh, far away or even having to do bow drill. Um, sockets or anything, you know, along that side, that line that requires a little bit of finesse. Um, it has a choil on the front, so you can do smaller, finer carving and, and use it for that. The thickness is 2.5 millimeters. It's going to be out of 1090 or 1075. Um, and it's a little bit thinner than a lot of um, other machetes that I've designed, just because I actually love thin machetes, believe it or not. Um, they just don't uh, have their place as much as uh, the heavier ones. But I um, wanted to try it in, in a, in a uh, more classic design such as this. Um, it's really wide, so it can still probably be fine in batoning. It's done fine so far with everything I've done. Um, and, you know, of course, bent back to true. It's got a multi-use handle with a, um, the end of a uh, the end of an axe mm -hmm. on here because that just seems to be a very ergonomic handle. You can use it if you have to, double-handed, but you can also extend the grip just like this to get that board design. It has a continuous, continuous curvature along the whole end. Yeah, I'm really digging that. I think that that would be a, a piece that would earn a spot on our uh, our survival machetes list that we did last year yeah. if it were out. Oh, this is, I, I kind of intend this be this to be one to uh, really come up there high in everybody's list. And um, it's in the simplicity of design and the functionality and also a lot of my experiences just seeing what people need. Um, I'm pretty pretty tickled to death. I might try and do a longer one later. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see. You guys put comments down below. Yes, do. Also, there's going to be a uh, there's going to be a little North Star. You see how I drew that on there with the sharpie <laughs> and the word Condor? Yeah, yeah. We used to have it really big right here, but then we changed it all up. So there, I drew that in for you as well. Oh, and there's going to be an eye of a Condor too um, on the end, a small little hole. 
Yeah, I'm liking that. That's looking really good. Yeah, so all of these um, all of these will be on the Condor website. Gosh, this stuff is just so hard to strike compared to this. On the Condor website. And, of course, available on Knife Friday, Center. January 21st or January 22nd. I'm sorry, go ahead. As I, and, of course, on the Knife Center as well. <laughs> yes, and Knife Center as well. Um, sometime after... January 22nd, I believe. Yes. Never been able to set fire during any of the interviews, so I'm going to do it just on principle alone. Yeah, to you have to, have to say you've been able to do like it. Security guys and stuff like that. Yay! And then, while this is going, you can take that to expunge all the fires out that you have in camp in case, you know, the um, ranger comes by and you find out you're not supposed to have uh, fire inside the room. In case the ranger comes by or the shot show security. <laughs> yeah, or the shot show security. I mean, I don't know how some of the, the fire steel companies haven't gotten in trouble setting fires yet because I always seem to get yelled at right away. <laughs> well, well, Joe, you do have violin. you do have a bit of a reputation. They probably saw you coming. Well, I don't know. They got... I, I think I'm going to talk to some people um, for, for shot show 2021 so I can have a little like fire nook or something. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Joe, thanks so much for uh, taking the time to show us these knives today. Knives and machetes, of course. I really, yeah. I'm, I'm really digging that last one as a, as a nice packable, quote unquote, survival machete, especially. Yeah. Yeah. There is um, a bunch of other designs on our website. We picked up a new designer, designer Jason Breeden, who's worked with Spyderco and Tops before. Um, Walter Matthews also has some new designs out. Condor has some amazing new designs out, including a folder that they've done completely in-house that has a plastic handle. Um, and there's, uh, of course, some really cool swords because we're not at SHOT Show, we can talk about swords. Right. Um, and so there's a, a new Viking sword in there as well. We're, we're, we are really looking forward to it. Uh, folks, thanks for sticking around on this interview with us. If you want to see more, again, uh, we'll have the Condor catalog to take a look at, and we'll have all this stuff up uh, on the Knife Center, if not now, very soon. Uh, but make sure to follow the links in the description so you can check it out and maybe get a pre-order in while you're at it. Joe, yeah, thank you again, my friend. No problem. If you guys want to learn more about Condor, condortk.com on uh, YouTube, Facebook, also, take people in the jungle. You can find out about that through bushcraftglobal.com and um, also on Instagram, of course. Absolutely. All right, guys. Thank you so much. See you next time. All right.